I can show you, but basically, this is my leg room. As you can see, I've got zero leg room at all. But that was should have been an 18 hour bus ride has turned into a 22 hour bus ride with all the delays we got. I was just dropped off in the center of Oimiakon, but the center of Oimiakon means basically in the middle of nowhere. A few months ago, I was having my holidays in Yakutia, in the middle of Siberia, in what is known as the coldest region in the world, outside of Antarctica. While there, I decided that I would try and push the boundaries of what I thought was humanly possible and attempt a crossing of the entire Kalima Highway. The Kalima Highway is a legendary road that connects the legendary town of Yakutsk with the just as legendary town of Magadan on the frozen sea of Ahutsk. While the Kalima Highway is popular amongst the seasoned travelers for a variety of reasons, there are two main things that make the Kalima Highway one of the most fascinating roads in the world. One, it was built by Gulag prisoners in the 1930s and that's why it's commonly referred to as the Road of Bones, just because it was built on the bones of all the people who perished during the construction of the Kalima. And second of all, it's the most remote road in the entire world, it's basically a 2000 km stretch of most unpaved road all the way from Yakutsk to Magadan. Halfway through the Kalima you can find the coldest inhabited settlement in the entire world between the villages of Oymyakon and Tamtor. So what we're going to do today is we'll jump on an old Soviet bus for 18 hours, did you get that right? 18 hours all the way to Oymyakon. Guys, let's finish this frozen spaghetti and let's head to the coldest inhabited settlement on planet Earth. Alright, so I just left the apartment because I need to go to the designated place where I will be picked up by the driver who will take me along the Kalima to Oimiakon. So what usually happens when tourists come here to Yakutsk and they want to experience the cold, they go to Oimiakon in a big car, they hire a personal driver from one of the tour agencies all over town. The problem with that is that it costs an insane amount of money, something like north of a thousand dollars. I can't pay that! <laughs> so instead I was doing some digging and I found that Привет. Привет. And I found somebody who hooked me up with a local taxi driver here, with a local marshrutka driver, I should say. So I think I've got a seat in a minibus that will travel to Oimiakon. And if the prospect of traveling 18 hours on an old Soviet bus across one of the coldest regions on Earth wasn't scary enough, here's what the page of the Kalima Highway on Viki Travel says. Independent travel in Kalima is a serious adventure with the very real possibility of death. The area is essentially lawless, undeveloped, barely populated and unbelievably remote. Wow, sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Every year, dozens of people die in the region from drowning, freezing, car accidents, starvation, tick-borne encephalitis, alcohol poisoning, fires, crime, wild animals, or they just disappear. Man, I'm getting more and more excited as time goes by. However, there's a however, fortunately. It says, although Though the possibility of death may still be real, it is relatively remote for those who plan carefully and who travel by convoy in more than one four-wheel drive or heavy truck. Which is exactly what we're not going to do today! <laughs> So the only thing that is a bit unfortunate is that we'll be traveling at night because it's currently 4 a.m. here in Yakutsk. I just made a stop at a restaurant at a cafe here in town just to have one final meal before we get on the way. And it's actually absolutely mandatory that we stop for fuel wherever we can just because there are long stretches of road where you've got just one gas station for example. So you have to stop there because if you don't you might not be guaranteed to reach the next one because it might be 400 kilometers down the road that's what we're talking about hello slish na mnya karasho tagda spuskayus spasiba guys let's go uh, i guess that's for me <laughs> i see a lot of luggage on the 
roof of the car. No way in hell I'm putting my backpack in there for 18 hours, especially considering that my laptop is there. Здравствуйте. Guys, are you ready? <laughs> this is the amazing car. I think it's a Buhanka. That's what it's called. This is not Marshrutka. This is actually a Buhanka, which is like the next level of a Marshrutka. It's much more robust. And this is what is going to take us 18 hours into the frozen wilderness of Yakutia. Wow! <laughs> Yeah, Italy. Знаете, знаете Италии, знаете, да, да. Ну, хочу посмотреть реальные, реальные холла туда. Там экстрим. Да, да, экстрим. А сколько людей? Ну все вообще, все места будут заняты. Все места, о боже, ну реально экстремальные, да, да, да. Я не представляю. Like what the heck am I doing with my life? This bus will be filled to the absolute brim and it's already uncomfortable as hell. Now, already? Why did I not go via a tour agency with a comfortable car and all? Oh yeah, because it was too expensive. Yeah, I almost forgot. <laughs> One by one, our Buhanka traveled to all corners of Yakutsk to pick up all the passengers. Passengers were all locals going back to their native village of Oymyakon. They were all Yakut and only the Yakut language was spoken inside the Marshutka. We have now picked up all passengers and it took us like a couple of hours and as you can see <laughs> it's gotten dark already. Oh man. And I don't know if I can show you but basically this is my leg room. As you can see I've got zero leg room at all and I will have to stay like this for 18 hours. I literally can't move but I'm used to flying Ryanair so this feeling is not completely foreign to me but wow. <laughs> В реке. А, да, я видел видосы, но я не уверена, что я хочу. Там лезут 60, минус 60 туда лезут купаться. Тепло, да, весна. Вот это уже тепло, как когда. В воскресенье, наверное, я смотрел прогнозы, наверное, будет минус 43. А это вообще тепло. Это у нас лето. Я почти замерз здесь в городе. Да, тут вообще тепло это. It was at this point that the driver put on his booming playlist of Dobio's Russian and Yakut songs. I can't obviously risk letting the original audio play, no matter how obscure these songs might be, but I will make sure to find similar copyright free sound to give you the same feeling that I had traversing one of the most remote regions in Russia at night on a crappy Soviet bus. The only time that my ears could find relief from the horrible music of the driver was when we stopped for food. Alright, so around two hours into the journey, we have a break already at the cafe Uyut which means cozy we're at the cozy cafe so apparently the driver just told me that we're supposed to have dinner here а можно пожалуйста чуть плов чуть пюре а что за мясо здесь это говядина свинина and we're now having our first dinner on the kali mahawe not far from the village of tungyu New, which apparently, according to Wikipedia, has a population of 2,000 people. And I have to say, this Yakut cafe is absolutely lovely. You see all those Yakut imageries right there on the wall, so it makes sense. We're in Yakutia after all. Bon appetit, first meal on the Kalima. Wow, only big heavy trucks are able to travel on the Kalima, one of the deadliest, the hardest, the most remote roads in the whole of Russia and consequentially in the whole world. Wow, look at these massive wheels that these trucks are carrying along. 
You see, this minivan is also traveling the same way that we are traveling with all that stuff attached to the roof of the car, just as our Buchanka that is sitting right here waiting to take us further into the wilderness of the Kalima. Man, it's freezing, minus 34. And it feels like minus 36 at the very least. All right, that was a fun break. 100 kilometers into the journey. 1,900 until we get to Magadan. <laughs> While the hours went by very quickly at first, we gradually traveled deeper onto the Kalima. As we moved further away from the bright lights of Yakutsk, traffic became scarcer and scarcer, to the point that we did not see cars coming from the opposite direction for hours on end. Oh wow, thank god we stopped for a bathroom break. I was dying. So I was talking to the bus driver just now, apparently this stop right here, which is around 300 kilometers from Yakutsk, we're around 4 hours into our journey, is the last stop where we will find a toilet that is inside the building, that is heated. From now on there will be no canalization at all, there will be no pipes whatsoever that bring water into the various buildings, so that means that even if it's minus 50, well we still need to go out and have our number 1 or number 2 in the street, in the cold, can you imagine? So of course we're not going to have any signal whatsoever. In order to find out where I actually am, in order to figure out my location, I need to take a look at this. We're in the village of Uitpik Kuol, right in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> And actually, I need to go back to my boss, to my Buhanka now, because I think we're leaving. Please don't leave me here! Freaking hell, there's no way I'll ever be able to fall asleep tonight just because the road is so bumpy. Of course there is no asphalt, but so basically we're speeding 100 km per hour on ice on an unpaved road. This is even more hardcore than I was imagining, it's crazy. Alright, so we stopped again by the side of the road. I think it's the third time, isn't it? I'm starting to lose count. But anyway, here, let me turn on the torch of my phone because I can show you what I meant earlier. The toilet on the street. Can you guys guess what that is? So this is a toilet and you see that brown totem. Can you guys guess what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go to the toilet now, so I'm fine, but basically if I, if I ever needed to go to the toilet I would come here, close the door right here, and do whatever I needed to do. Probably I will have to do something like this tomorrow. We have now made it into the mountains of the Kalima. Good morning! The sun is now rising. Wow, and the landscapes are getting just so beautiful. Look at this. I guess these past 14 hours must have flown for you. Well, they have not flown by for me. <laughs> Inside this disco buhanka with Yakut music blasting all night long. But I think we can finally start our countdown to our arrival in Oimiakon. Wow, I can't feel my legs anymore. I can definitely feel my back because it's hurting so much. <laughs> Man, what a crazy adventure. Well, this is hands down the most uncomfortable ride I've ever been on, but the landscapes that I'm being rewarded with are just... I don't even feel the cold that much, it must be like minus 40 right now, but just because it's so hot inside that buhanka right there, I feel fine now. I'll probably start feeling the cold if I stay outside for more than a few minutes. And this is your typical station where you can find the toilet over there, you can find some sort of bin here as well where people throw out punctured tires it seems wow these are the tires that you need in order to be able to travel along the kalima this is the kind of road that we've been traveling on just to give you guys the idea <laughs> gravel mixed with ice and snow so this is why it looks and feels so bumpy while traveling on the car a skolka temperatura znajem minus 40 navierna tiplieje and now I've just asked the bus driver, we've still got three to four hours until we reach Oimiakon. 
I mean, we've been on this Buhanka for 15 hours already, so what's three or four more, right? This is a big stop, Cafe Cuba, you see all these trucks having a rest from their massive journey across the Kalima. I actually think I want to go to the toilet now, let me see if I can find it. Я даже никогда не видел термометра, где 70 есть. В Италии у нас нет. Ну, минус 40. Это рекорд для меня, я думаю. Самая низкая температура. Да, да, да. И когда минус 70, вы все равно едете. Да. Вау, поздравляю. У вас, у вас ну, трудные люди. Поздравляю. So I met the truck driver and he said he's going to Chukotka. How cool is that? He stopped here at this cafe as well. And he showed me this thermometer right here. I don't know about you guys, but a thermometer with 70 degrees below zero is something that I've never seen before. Wow. <laughs> we don't have these in Italy, right? Alrighty, so we made a deviation to the right past the Cuba Cafe and now we're not on the main Kalima Hau anymore but we are now on its branch that takes us, that is going to take us to Tamto and this section specifically sees even less traffic than the main highway just because it leads to three villages only with a population total of just over 2,000 people, just imagine. So we're probably not going to see any cars at all for the next three hours until we reach Oimiakon. The section of the Kalima connecting the Cafe Cuba with Oimiakon is known as the Old Kalima. Until 20 years ago, trucks used to pass on this road to travel from Yakutsk to Mogadan before a new one was built to the north of Oimiakon, passing through Ustnera and Susuman. Very few people nowadays live on this branch of the Kalima. The thing that I found the most insane is that this guy has driven the whole way by himself. We only have one driver. We're entering now the 19th hour of travel. We're a bit late according to the schedule. And this guy, wow! In Europe, we've got laws that drivers need to change every what, six, eight hours? And this guy has driven 19 hours continuously on one of the most dangerous roads in the world. Insane. I now also get why he's been blasting the music full volume to keep himself awake, basically. What should have been an 18 hour bus ride has turned into a 22 hour bus ride with all the delays we got. But it doesn't matter now because I can finally say I made it. Uh, Alright, so the situation is as follows. I was just dropped off in the center of Oimiakon, but the center of Oimiakon means basically in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so everybody left and they told me to just go and knock on that door and they said, I didn't quite get what they said, that's the thing, but they said that there should be someone there who could help me find some accommodation for tonight and would just generally help me in case I start feeling too cold. Because there's definitely a possibility here in the coldest place on earth. I mean, it's not as cold as it was. Was 50 years ago when it was minus 71.2 degrees Celsius but still minus 45 you don't want to be out on the street in minus 45 weather do you oh I found out that we can actually get closer to this monument I think wow this gate is frozen shut almost <laughs> here it says Zdies Bila Zaregi Stri Ravanna Naibolia Niska Temperatura Vozduka F Sivernam Palushari. Wow, the lowest temperature ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere. A 
на такси, uh -huh. хотел просто погулять пару часов и просто хотел ну, уточнить, что есть место, где я могу остаться, если мне холодно, и я почти умираю. И это все. So thankfully, I was saved by this woman right here, who's just offering me some, <laughs> some tea. So thankfully, I should be able to not die today. Hey, that's a good start. А зачем вам трудно будет? Сейчас вроде тепло. Тепло, думаете? Но у меня есть все как, ну не знаю, два часа на улице. Только что сходили с такси, такси уехал, я видел, что я был среди ничего, и я чуть-чуть переживал. А у вас носы большие, опасно для... Потому что нос большой. Ну, наверное. А в этом году какая была самая низкая температура? В этом Аймиконе было 64 градуса. Это холодно, да. Это холодно, да. Когда начинается холод? Минус 53, 5, 50 это жить можно? Можно погулять? Можно 52-53 это уже. Самая низкая температура. Я знаю, что говорят 71, как на памятнике, но может что чуть-чуть меньше, да? А, столько я живу, 72, я не вижу. Я при моей жизни, да, мне, мне 49 лет, в моей жизни было 68. А летом Ой, температуры какие? Ой, плюс, до да, плюс 30 доходит. Плюс 30. Ну, это как 100 градусов да, разница. Да, да, да. Поэтому мы тоже суровые такие. Характер а, тоже да, есть. Да, да, да. Ну, вы, у вас хороший характер, mm -hmm. я считаю, очень милая. Вы, вы не видели, как мы злимся. Да. Если мы злимся, то это что-то. Бей, а вон стоит, бей. Ой, а, да-да, я видел. Красавчик. Это собака моего брата. Oh wow, that was a nice snack. Now, since it's so late, because it took us 22 freaking hours to get here, we'll spend the last hour that we've got before sunset to have a walk around, and then we'll worry about finding a place to stay for tonight. Ну, тогда, наверное, может, увидимся попозже или завтра. Хорошо? Спасибо за все. We've got one hour until the sunset in the coldest place in the world, outside of Antarctica! So what is there to do on a lovely Sunday afternoon here in Oymyakon? I don't know, you guys tell me. Well, a good start would be finding a place to sleep at the night. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not overly worried because the lady there told me that there actually is a hotel in another village not far from Oymyakon, the village of Tomtor, around half an hour away from Oymyakon. So, so it should be fine. I think the main thing is as soon as I see a car, I should probably stop in and ask if they can give me a lift to Tamtor because surely I cannot walk all the way. There are bears, there are wolves. It's too risky. And I feel like I've been risking my life enough at least for today. <laughs> This must be the meteorological station of Oymyakon, where every winter between December and January the lowest temperatures of the northern hemisphere are recorded. And by the way, why specifically Oymyakon should be the coldest place on Earth? Why is that so? Well, that's because Oymyakon basically sits in the middle of a valley surrounded by the mountain ranges of Yakutia, and that's why basically cold air just sits here for weeks at a time and that contributes to the lowest temperatures ever in the world being recorded here, outside of Antarctica. Oh, здравствуйте еще раз. Да, да, еще, еще гуляю, я был внутри. Сейчас вызвать тебе. Сейчас? Да, или не надо? Думаю, что в пят э, подходит. А, хорошо, я думал, ты замерзнешь, и поэтому пораньше хотел вызвать. Не нормально пока. Но если замерзну, я просто войду в, в дом. А, там пускай, да? Да, 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 я поговорил а, с женщиной а, там, да. Алло. Проживу до, до пяти. О, ага. oh, actually, this was my boss. <laughs> That was the same guy who drove me from 
Yakutsk to Oymyakon, the mad lad who drove 22 hours straight. And basically, I was talking to him for a bit and he set me up with one of his friends that is going to drive me to the hotel, to the village of Tom Tor in around half an hour's time. That's perfect! Because we've got everything set now. We've got our hotel, we've got our ride to the hotel. That's just perfect, yeah! We're not going to die today! Wow, the silence here in Oymyakon is absolutely deafening. Such a weird sensation. I've never been in a village so remote. I never had any reason to travel to a village so remote before I found out that this was the coldest place in the world outside of Antarctica. And look at what we've got here. This is actually kind of fun. So basically, you know that in every single city and town in Russia, you've got a monument in dedication to the Second World War or the Great Patriotic War as they call it here. Here in Russia and here in Oymyakon, a village with a population of 600 people, you have one as well. Look, in dedication to the soldiers who fought in the Second World War, in dedication to the soldiers who fought in the Second World War who were born in Oymyakon. Look, all six of them. Здравствуйте! Вы мой спаситель, да? Да. В Томтор? Да, да, в Томтор. Хорошо, замечательно. Ага. Едем? Да. Ты долго ждал? А, не очень просто я зашел внутри, потому что много, а. пальцы, ноги чуть-чуть <laughs> заморожены. Да. Я думал, что я бои, боялся, что я потерял маленькую пальцу. <laughs> So, I feel like that was pretty much it for what we could do in Oymyakon. I mean, at the end of the day, it's always the journey that is more interesting than the destination. Especially when the journey involves a 22-hour bus ride on an old Soviet Buhanka. <laughs> and at some point I felt like that my little finger on my left foot was starting to become a bit numb and I was afraid of a frostbite but thankfully the taxi driver or rather the friend of the bus driver the bus driver called for me came by pretty swiftly so I'm now heading to the village of Tomtor and to the hotel where we will be spending our first night in the pole of cold there you go, the factory of hot water for Oymyakon. <laughs> it looks greasy, doesn't it? Wow, it just feels so weird knowing that I'm this close to a comfortable warm bed in a guest house. I mean, we'll have to see how comfortable that is, but it surely will be better than the seat that I had on that bus coming here to Oymyakon. I think I will have nightmares for the rest of my life. PTSD, that's what I'm going to have. <laughs> Wow, this is gonna be the most expensive taxi ride I've ever had. Спасибо. Баня или туалет? Баня. Хорошо. Well, this was definitely the most expensive taxi ride I've ever been on. 5,000 rubles, but at the end of the day, what could I have done? I couldn't have stayed out there in the street in minus 45. Also, you probably guys are not able to see this, but it's getting foggy. And when it gets foggy, it means that it will be really cold tonight. Well, so I'm getting treated to some nice homemade soup, some nice Yakut soup as you can see. That's my room over there, which I will show you in a minute. But first, let's have some well-deserved dinner. I feel like I haven't eaten in like so long. 
And most importantly, it's hot and warm, which is exactly what I need after this trip to the pole of cold, to the coldest place on planet Earth. Wow, in the meanwhile, they're getting the banya ready for me, so I will be able to wash myself, which is one thing that I desperately need as well, after a 22-hour trip to the middle of nowhere. Kumis? Kumis? What is that? It's like a Okay, okay. I'm also getting treated to some nice typical Yakut drink. I've never heard of it before, so I'm really curious to see what it tastes like. Kumis? Kumis? Uh -huh. Kumis? So according to this thermometer right here, it is currently minus 46 out here on the outside and I've got my towel and everything. Now I'm now ready to wash myself inside this banya. I never had a shower of this kind, to be honest. Let's go inside and let's just investigate what actually we're supposed to do. Oh wow, it's so warm in here. So basically I just had the babushka give me the instructions for this. So basically here we've got hot water. Man, this thing is boiling. And then here we've got a bucket with cold water water instead so we'll be pouring water into these things right here and we'll be using these to wash ourselves we've got all sorts of soap and everything that we need in here and once we're done with this then we come back here and we just get dry yeah we just get dressed and we go back to the house probably to bed at this point Wow, that was the best thing I've ever done and so relaxing. Oh man, it feels so good now. You guys gotta try it. Trust me, you guys gotta jump on a 22 hour bus ride across one of the most inhospitable regions of the world. And get your ass here. Trust me, this sensation is one of the best I've ever had in my life. Wow. Guys, I present to you the room where I'll be getting my well-deserved rest for tonight. This is my bed, what I've been on for the past 15 minutes. This is a huge picture of the owner of the guest house. Her name is Susanna. There you go. Look at this. Wow, so old school. But that's exactly how we like it. I'm actually sharing this room with one of the truck drivers traveling along the Kali Mahawe and stopping in Tomtor. And yeah, guys, what can I say? It's been uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> we still need to continue to Magadan, right? Because we're only halfway through the job. So I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.